Greetings, I'm Ryan with Flat Panda Crafts, and for my first video on the channel, I figure I'd show um, this particular router table from Rockler. This is the Rockler um, collapsible routing table. It's for about $200 or so. Uh, if you're part of their little, mem I think it's just an email list, you get like 15% off periodically, so that's what we did here. Um, but I get a lot of requests on Facebook and Reddit on just how I feel about this. So fair warning, this is actually only my second router cable. I got one as a at a resale store, kind of like a Habitat for Humanity, but only for tools up in Fort Collins. Um, so I figured I'd show you guys uh, this one. I was having some issues with my previous table. The, the uh, fences were not complainer. So I got this one here and uh, I used it already a couple times and it works pretty well. So real quick, this is actually what you get in one box. There's actually two boxes you're going to need for the total package. We'll cover the second one a little bit later. So this is stored in its flat configuration. It's got retaining pins. Push the button on top, releases the pin, flip it over, same thing, and the legs come free. All right. So you can either use this, you can retain them in an X position, or you can retain them in sort of a L bracket position and this would mount against a wall and then could fold down um, when you don't need it in the way. So it's pretty neat, nifty how that goes. To go to desktop X configuration, you use the same retaining pins, line up the holes and put them into place. This is definitely a necessary step. All right. There we go. Now I do have this on my workmate. You definitely want something a little bit deeper. This isn't quite enough. If I replate or if I move the uh, back plate to the rear position, this would probably be pretty good. But for demonstration purposes, it does come with a uh, router channel here uh, for a miter uh, gauge or something of that nature. It does not come with the miter gauge at all, but you can pretty much use any standard one that you get with the table saw or maybe even a previous router table. It does have the, the bit guard right here. This can be removed. You just loosen the, uh, the screws, slide them out of the T-slot, or you can put them back in just as easily. It has all the way down to zero and about two inches of clearance if you want. So we'll tighten those up. Show you the back. So it does have about a two and a quarter inch uh, vacuum attachment here, dust collection. These large knobs here allow for whole movement of the fence. They also even allow for full removal of the fence by sliding them all the way forward and then they come out of the keyhole. Now in my case, it does seem to be a little fussy. I can get the uh, table to stop shipping on me. But it will come out. The uh, two fences or two fence pieces here. They do move independently of each other and they can go all the way closed if necessary. All right, and they just attach here again with some T-bolts. Uh, this here is a starter pin. So that way if you're not using a fence and you're using a pattern bit, then you can go ahead and use that sort of as a control guide there. So let's see if we can get the uh, fence off. There we go. And the whole fence comes off. And these are just carriage bolts that hold it on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and drive that back on. All right. So we're going to push this all the way to the back, tighten up these handles. And we're going to talk about what comes in box number two. Box number two contains the, the mounting plate for the router. All right, that's this blue piece. It's actually a two pieces here. All right, so it has an upper plate, which is, I don't know if you can see it, this inner ring right here, and then the outer plate, which is the rest of this. So the upper plate, the, just the circular one, that's actually what mounts to the router, okay? And then it's sort of an adapter. So the circular plate actually has a bunch of different holes and different configurations designed for a variety of different router models. This one here is the medium size. They come in a small size for things like palm routers and the like. All right. And then this is the rest of this plate is basically what just sets it inside here. 
Now, something the salesman at Rockler told me is that this collectively is the same thickness as the standard plate. Now, I have a Bosch 1617 medium router. Unfortunately, he lied. This is literally half the thickness of that. Now, it's not a big deal, okay? Just understand. But if they tell you that the stock plate is the same thickness as the router plate, yeah, if you only count this piece, sure. Now, the difference isn't so great that I'm considering, you know, removing it. But the idea is that I could take this in and out so I can go from a handheld router and then immediately into a table router position. But the reason why this is sold separately is because, like I said, the table is one item and then the plate is going to be either a, for small routers or for medium routers. They don't make them for big, big routers like the huge Makitas or the, the Tritons or anything of that nature. So mounting is pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and throw the cable through first. Okay. It's a little bit of a tight fit with the 1617, but we could do this. So I got to drop in the, the front handle first, the back, and then there are two screws that come with, with it to hold the back down. This is pretty much the only part that requires a tool when removing the router assembly. I did try to do this to route without these retaining screws. Don't do that. Um, I wasn't in any serious danger, but the assembly did come out a, a quarter inch or so. Um, and if I had pushed it, it probably would have come out a whole lot more. So yeah, don't do that. Um, the there's a third part to the plate assembly here, and that's this insert right here. This they come with one, and they do have an additional kit that you can buy for. I want to say it's twenty five dollars. Don't quote me on that. That has different aperture sizes for different uh, bit sizes. Um, this one here is probably the only one I'll ever need personally. It allows just a little bit enough for the collet to sit there. Uh, but if I wanted to change uh, the collet or uh, just tighten this out, I got three screws here that I would need to undo. It's no big deal. The uh, starter pin, which I tightened down a little too much. There we go. It's just stored back here. And then if I'm going to use it, I can do that right here. So if I'm working on a piece, I can use the starter pin to start and then rotate into the bit as it's spinning. Okay. All in all, it's pretty good. It's pretty simple to use. If I got the, the fence in place, I'm going to loosen up this one. I'm going to move that to the side. And then I can move this forward here. And then I can adjust as necessary and then tighten this whole thing down. So when I initially did the, some of my first works, I thought this was not going to be anywhere near enough to hold this in place. I'm wrong. It holds very, very well, actually. I thought uh, the piece was slipping and it turns out it was just me doing it wrong. So I'll get that in a minute. All right. So all in all, this is actually a really good router table. It is a little expensive. Like I said, it's a... I think by the time you're done, you're probably going to be in the neighborhood of 220, 225 with taxes. Uh, but if you're a very small shop like this is, I mean, literally you're looking at 30% of my workshop with just the angle of the camera alone. Um, this is a pretty good buy, especially if you don't have multiple routers. Like I only have the one Bosch. So if I wanted to go from a router table like this, and I need to go handheld on a large piece of furniture, screws pull it out and there we go okay. so it's not a regular you know huge router table where it's got the built-in power system you do have to use the onboard switching and the onboard cabling for all that type of stuff but this this works out pretty well um, they do have five little set screws in here to adjust this when I came in uh, I initially put the, uh, the plate in here it was very very low um, and when I had to put the set screws in for the very first time it was so tight that I actually wound up having to get a drill 
with a very tiny uh, hex bit in order to just put them in there. But once they were in there, it's no big deal. Then I was able to use a standard Allen wrench to, to back them back out so that way they're adjusted properly. Um, the whole piece is made out of MDF. Um, I would say it probably looks like it's laser cut to a point and then template routed for the, f uh, for the final fit. Um, top is coated with melamine, bottom's coated with melamine, and then got this black border. I'm not entirely sure what that is. I don't know if melamine comes in black. It feels the same. Um, pretty solid, well built. Um, it's got these, t these feet here, which have this cutout. You can either drive a screw right down through that into your workbench, okay? Yeah. Or if you don't want to mess up your workbench, a standard F clamp can grab in there pretty easily. Um, that's the other lesson I learned. Don't operate this without securing it to your workbench in some fashion. Uh, it will move on you. So again, another lesson learned from stupidity, but I still have all 10 fingers, so we're good there. All right, um, if you have any questions, I'm sure the guys at Rockler would be willing to answer them. They've been very kind when I've ever gone down there. Um, or you can leave questions in the comments below and we'll see uh, how you feel about that. All right.